Good morning, Mvelo. It's uh, great to have you on our call today at the Business Spotlight. And uh, I'm sure that uh, business owners that listen to our recording and listen to your um, yeah, your discussion with us, uh, they're going to learn a lot. They're going to learn from your experience. And uh, I'm glad that uh, you saw your, uh, you made yourself available for us. And uh, I hope that uh, people who listen to it will get lots of learnings from us as we go along. So yes, just uh, quickly, Mavela, would you mind introducing yourself? All right, so, so my name is Mvelo Shope. Um, so I'm the founder and CEO of Zayo. So Zayo is focused on training people in digital skills using our proprietary LMS. Okay, and um, when you started the business, and I think you said 2018, eh? that's correct. Yes, that's correct. So when you started it, why did you start it? I mean, I mean, I live in South Africa um, and my partners live in, you know, they're from Kenya and Malawi. So I think across the continent, generally, mm. we've seen huge unemployment um, crises. So yes. that's what we sought to, to really solve for. Um, how do we upskill and reskill the population of Africa um, mm. to get them ready um, and to get them the necessary skills for the jobs that are actually in demand today? Excellent. So there's, there's obviously a huge... A need for these types of people, not only in Africa, I, mean, I know of Europe and other countries, obviously, are people move there quite easily when they have these types of skills. Exactly. So, I mean, we've seen a huge shift in um, skills requiring some sort of technical competence um, across mm -hmm. the globe. So we just yeah. want to go through our platform to, to be able to, re to take advantage of those. So if you look at Zio and what makes you guys unique and why should you, uh, why should people train with you? Um, so, I mean, it, it's mostly on our pedagogy side. Um, so we, there's a lot of organizations that have, you know, set video content or PDFs, and then you just consume them on your own. Yes. Um, so we have a, we do have a, a part of the business where you are able to do that, where, you know, it's self-paced, um, yes. but have an assistant that's an, well, an AI assistant where it picks up on the errors that you're making constantly and then recommends, um, you know, a better way of actually learning for you. So we, we're literally trying to build um, a system that is a personalized um, learning path for each right. individual. Um, and then we do have um, a more human um, interacting approach where we have cohort-based learning, um, where individuals can then be part of a cohort and then there's a, an instructor and the intuitors that help them through a set period of of training. Excellent, excellent. So not only are you left to your own devices, but you have somebody you can reach out to and, and get the learning done. That's correct. Excellent. So you guys have grown significantly from 2018. What do you attribute that growth to? Um, I mean, the, the filing team is very strong. Um, so we complement each other from a skills perspective. I think just from a resilience um, point of view as well, um, having survived things like COVID, having survived periods in the business where we were really yeah. struggling and just pivot, general pivots in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, just the support structure as well that we've we've built around the business from our advisors to the investors that have come on board um, yeah. over the years. So we've we've been able to leverage those quite well um, to get to where we are today. Excellent. So so good advice and, and input and then obviously the financials to back you up. That's correct. Excellent. So as an employer, what's your biggest learning uh, been in the business? So the biggest learning is definitely how you go about hiring is is, is extremely important. Um, so mm -hmm. the, the attributes that you look for um, that you know complement the, the the team and the culture that you've built within the team is extremely yeah. important. You know when you bring individuals into the team, they they become brand ambassadors. They you know are people yeah. that the rest of the team actually works with every day. So if it's a bad apple, um, you, it will cause a lot of problems for you. So when you do go about hiring, just make sure that you there's set principles and values that you're looking for in the individual. Um, and when you do, unfortunately, make that bad hire, um, every now and then it does happen. Just make sure that you you deal with that as soon as possible. So don't okay. have that person in business uh, longer than they need to be. Yeah. It's almost about the fly in the ointment, eh? So 
take take the bad apple out and uh, the rest of the apples will survive and grow. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, I think what I find is that lots of business owners, although they know those things, they don't deal with that quickly enough. And uh, yeah. we hang on to that person for too long. It's not an easy conversation to have, after all, um, with yes. that individual. So I think that's why a lot of business owners or just leaders mm -hmm. generally shy away from having those discussions. Yeah. So, Villa, how do you balance the demands of business and the demands of your personal life? How do you get a balance between that? Um, that's that has been a journey for me um, as well. Um, so I know in the beginning it was it was really difficult. It was either I was putting too much time in the business, um, and then having very little in my personal life. Um, but what I've learned is that you know you need to have you know which is the key word balance yes. um, for you to be successful um, in your business. You need to rest. You need to um, as best as you can find time mm -hmm. to exercise. Mm -hmm. um, to have time, just downtime to hang out with, you know, friends, family, yeah. whatever. Mm. Um, that's just outside of the business as well, where you don't constantly talking about the business. So, you know, having being strict on yourself to say, hey, yeah. um, you know, just the business really does need you all the time. Um, but it's better to not always be, you know, in the business. Okay. It takes some rest, yeah. Yeah, I think that, that time to reflect about you know your life and your business is a really important part of it. And right. and uh, I, I spoke to a business owner previously, and he spoke about blocks of golden time that just you have to put it away. You know, it might be that to reflect on the business, perhaps you know your self education or you know, just the fact that you you need a break. You know, yeah. put that in your diary and and uh, don't be. You know, you be strict about it. Make sure that you know you, you recruit or you work that way. Yeah. We spoke a little bit about team members, recruitment, and so on. And I think what I found is that people with passion are, are probably the people you want. Um, if the beliefs and, and that matches, then you need a person who is passionate about his work, um, takes ownership, and, and is accountable. You agree with yeah. that? No, definitely. Um, I think w one of the traits that you quickly see um, from someone that's that's passionate about what you're doing um, is agency. So, you know, when somebody has, you know, a lot of agency because they're passionate about what you're doing. Um, they don't fear making mistakes. They don't fear yeah. um, you know, breaking things down to, you know, to move the, the business forward. So mm -hmm. that's that's a very special trait um, that you find in a very limited number of people. Okay. Are you guys um, in sort of a hybrid working environment at the moment, or do you work from office? Um, so we, we're hybrid. Um, so we've been hybrid um, actually since before COVID. So we've done the okay. entire business. You're, you're ahead of the wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. How do you foster, you know, how do you manage that from a productivity perspective? Yeah, so, I mean, very early on, we realized that, you know, people do have personal lives, um, yeah. and, you know, for them to give as best as they can to the business, um, we we need to work and with that, not not necessarily around it or yes, just yes. with it. Um, so how we've we've always gone about um, fostering productivity is, is setting milestones, um, and then obviously time frames around when those milestones need to be met, yes. um, and then giving those to the people um, or the, the employees to be able to meet when they can meet them. Um, given the time frame. So if you're basically working at, if you're a night owl and you prefer working at two o'clock in the morning, um, mm. you know, that's fine. You know, yeah. um, you know, as long as I guess you're available for calls at specific times, you know, during yes. the yes. business hours of the day. So we're, we've been more than happy um, with our staff being able to, you know, be able to do live things, you know, yes. at 12 o'clock in the day. Mm. But, you know, they need to be able to complete um, certain milestones that have been set for them by a certain time. Okay. Great stuff. Villa, what are the, some of the common misconceptions people have about being an entrepreneur and running a business? Um, there's quite a few. So, you know, I mean, you're your own boss, right? Um, I think that, yeah. that's a very big misconception because your client becomes your boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More than anything, um, that's probably a lot trickier to handle than, you know, if you have a manager, et cetera, yes. et cetera. 
So there's that's definitely one. I mean, there's also the other one where you set your own hours. Um, technically, you do, but you know, when when your client requires work, um, you know, now you, mm -hmm. your hours tend to get stretched quite a lot. Yeah. So it's, it's just small things where the solution of of freedom um, that a lot yeah. of people think engineers have. It's actually it's non-existent. You just really choose a different boss, a different um, yeah. yeah, approach really to yeah. uh, different parameters in which. Yeah. Is, don't don't you find that people always say yes? You've got lots of money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <It's also that. laughs> yeah. Look for yourself. You must have lots of money. They don't understand cash flow and month end and clients not paying and exactly. stuff. Exactly, and payroll and the rest of that. So yeah. yeah. So if we look at new business owners and we look at the financial side of business, what advice would you give them? Um, so there's this piece of advice that I got really early on was, you know, when you're looking to pay for something or you're looking to take on a service, um, look at it in a in the financial year or 12 month um mm -hmm. perspective. So don't if something says, you know, you're paying a thousand rand a month, um, mm -hmm. don't Think about it as a thousand rand a month. Think of it over twelve months and paying twelve thousand rand, and then evaluate: Are you willing to pay twelve thousand rand for whatever you're then paying for? Yes, uh, I think that's a, definitely a, an mm. one that has driven some of our decisions around what we actually spend on. Um, yeah. I think another one would be um, try be as capital efficient as possible. Um, so. You know, I mean, I think that's another thing I could attribute our success to actually being alive and surviving through through COVID. Yeah. We've been extremely capital um, efficient over the years. Um, we've had to make really mm -hmm. tough decisions, especially as a founding team around, you know, salaries and the rest of that. When, when yes. you had to. So if you are in a position where you can make those decisions, um, definitely do them um, for the good of the business. Yeah. So reinvest in your business rather than take a huge salary out of it. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Okay. So five years from now, where do you see yourself in the business? Um, so what we're wanting to build is really an end-to-end -end solution for, for young um, Africans specifically, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, you pick up skills of, with us. We help you get, you know, part-time work and full-time work where, you know, you it's not just an academy that we're building, but we're building no. uh, a career partner for you where, mm -hmm. you know, we train and then we place you and then you know as you're changing your jobs in the future you're able to to come back to us and we really want to do this across across the continent um mm -hmm. Kenya, nigeria um malawi where my partners are from um literally everywhere on the continent sorry i'll see my um load shedding has to start it typical south african eh <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> we have many challenges as a country. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs to solve. <laughs> yes. So if we talk about you know an interview and and what is the one question that I should have asked but didn't, and uh, what is the answer to that question? Um, I think maybe asking you know knowing what I know today, would I would I do it again? <laughs> okay. Um. And yeah, I mean, there are days where I'd probably just say absolutely not. Uh, but I think when you look at it as a as a whole, um, yeah, I, I would. You know, there, there's a lot of things that I would obviously do differently. Yes. Uh, and maybe just pointing one thing, I'd be a lot more patient with myself. I'd be a lot more patient with with the business as well. Um, I think oftentimes as as an entrepreneur, you think you know because my projections look like this, I yeah. will achieve. It. It's called yeah, yeah. time. Um, yeah, so just rethinking and re-looking at that would definitely mm. be one of the things, but I would definitely look at give that. it a go. Mm. Yeah. Last question. If you had a magic wand, how would you spread that magic across the business? Across the business? Um, I think, you know, just for my team members to be a lot happier around, mm. you know, the, the the solution and the 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 challenge that we're facing, um, mm -hmm. it's it's obviously a you know a crazy and and it's, it's a sad thing where there's yeah. high unemployment. But I think if we look at it from a more you know positive perspective, say okay, cool, mm -hmm. if we do this, this, and this, we will solve you know all the unemployment in yeah. the country. 
Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. so I think that's the way I'd, that's what I'd wave the one. Bill, I'd like to thank you for your time. It's really been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, good luck with the business and uh, may it be very successful in the future. Yeah, thank you so much, Bert, for having me. It's great to share. Thank you.